right? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and call this to order. Uh, I know we've got a minute, but I think everybody that's on the first part of the agenda is here. So if it's all right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, uh, the first thing I want to do is if everybody, if you haven't had an opportunity to make sure you have refreshed your agenda for tonight and look at it, and then I'm going to ask for a motion for approval. So we second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Now, if you'll take a minute to look at your minutes, which for some reason, Lisa, mine aren't showing up. I said refreshing. Anyway, I, I have read them, but for those of you, does everybody else have their minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, could I have, yeah, my minutes for approval or not? I mean, my agenda's up here, but not my minutes, but I've read them. Could I entertain a motion to approve the minutes? So, yeah. Anybody Second. need to recuse himself? Everybody here at the last couple of meetings? I was not here January 7th. January 7th for Matt. Okay. I was on the phone, but... Uh, you were here, but yeah, I think Lisa wrote that down. Um, all right. Uh, uh, Matt needs... Did you get that, Lisa? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, could I have a Order motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, so a move. And a second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion <clears throat> carried. We're going to go right on in to the action item. And the first one is the audit presentation by Mr. Tyler Beatty, CPA with Dixon Hughes Goodman LLP. And we've got a bunch of information in front of us as well. So if you'll direct us where to look first. Yes, of course. Hope everybody's doing good tonight. Um, you should have three deliverables in front of you, uh, one of which I think is the, um, the physical copy of the presentation. There's a, a stapled copy, which is our required communications as part of the audit. It's titled the report to the Board of Education. And then the bound copy is the uh, Board of Education, Beaufort County Schools financial statements. Um, I will mention as I'm going through the presentation, what I've tried to do is pull out the pertinent information for, from each of those reports um, and go over it in the PowerPoint presentation so I won't be having you flip through the pages. <coughs> but it's, it's good night reading later tonight, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as you mentioned, my name's Tyler Beatty. I'm a manager with Dixon Hughes Goodman. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking Willie and his entire team for the help they provided during this year's audit. I would also like to note that the LGC has accepted the audit and the audit has also been submitted and accepted by the Federal Audit Clearinghouse. Today I'm going to walk you through the audit results, the communication reports to the board, we'll do a review of the financial highlights as well as a quick review of the compliance audit. So we'll go to, uh, I think it's slide four maybe. Um, and so what this is, this is an excerpt from our audit opinion. Uh, this, this audit opinion is considered an unmodified opinion. This is the opinion that you would want to receive and it gives financial statement users the understanding that the information provided in this report is materially accurate. Our entire auditor's report can be found on page one of the financial statements. So we'll flip two more pages. Um, and this has got the uh, various aspects um, of the required communications <coughs> to the Board of Education, which is the stapled report. The highlights of that are the, uh, the report will present our responsibilities as it relates to the audit, which is based on generally accepted auditing standards as well as the OMB uniform guidance. Generally accepted auditing standards dictates the standards we must follow when performing the audit and the uniform guidance prescribes the uh, and governs the compliance audit work. There was an accounting principle elected and implemented in fiscal year 2018. Um, it was GASB number statement 75, which is related to accounting and financial reporting for post-employment benefits other than pensions. The board has two OPEB plans, which is, stands for other post-employment benefits. It's the Retiree Health Benefit Fund, as well as the Disability Income Plan of North Carolina. Both those are administered through the TSERS plan, or through Orbit, excuse me, similar to the TSERS pension plan. Um, the significant estimates and sensitive disclosures are communicated in this report. We've identified those as being the useful lives of depreciable assets, as well as the 
proportionate share of the net pension liability for the teachers and state employees retirement system plan as well as the net pension liability and net pension asset of the net OPEB liability and net OPEB asset for the retiree health benefit plan and the disability income plan of North Carolina. If we had any difficulties or disagreements with management during the audit process, we would communicate those to you here. We didn't have any difficulties or disagreements with management during the audit process. <coughs> If we uncovered any uncorrected misstatements during the audit process, we'd also communicate those to you here. We didn't have any uncorrected misstatements during the audit process. And then also in Appendix A, there's a management representation letter. We've attached this uh, letter to the report so you have an understanding of what representations were given to us during the course of the audit. So now we'll flip forward to a few financial statement highlights. There's a title page and then it'll get into the first uh, graph. So this slide shows each funding source for general and restricted revenues, which is your fund two and fund eight revenues, which is the first orange bar, your state revenues, which is the green bar, as well as your federal revenues, which is the lighter color orange bar. <coughs> so your general and restricted funding specific to the general fund, um, that funding was around $15 million um, in fiscal year 2018, which was around a $200,000 increase from the prior year. Um, the increase was related to the increase in county appropriations that were received in fiscal year 2018 compared to 17. So your personnel expense in your general fund, which is your 100 and 200 object codes, increased around 670000 So there was actually no <coughs> real discretionary increases in funding that were received in the current year compared to the prior year when you consider personnel expense increases. So your state funding, which is your orange bar, obviously it's the largest funding source of the board. Um, it decreased approximately $53,000 in 2018 when compared to 2017. So personnel expenses for the state public school fund, which once again is your 100 and 200 object codes, it decreased slightly around 148000 from the previous year. And then obviously your state allocations are primarily based on ADM population. <coughs> And then your federal funding, which is the small orange bar beside of it, it did increase slightly in the current year, but it's generally consistent with the prior years and also pretty consistent with the funding levels we see across the state with other districts. Um, and a schedule of federal awards, which details all the federal rewards received, can be found on page 66 of the financial statements. So one other thing to point out is that this slide gives a good representation of how much the board relies on state funding. And that's one of the primary reasons it's hard to budget for a school year until state allocations are finalized. So on the next slide, this is your expenditures by purpose as a percentage of total general state and federal expenditures. So the green bar represents your 5,000 purpose codes <coughs> as a comparison to the total expenditures and your yellow bar is, it, is all other expenditures. Um, you'll notice that the board has consistently spent around 75% on instructional services with the remaining 25 being spent on operational services. As auditors, what we look for is consistency, which obviously this, this uh, slide represents. So on the next slide is your general and restricted revenue fund balance with the purple bar representing your total fund balance. Um, the green bars you're available for appropriation fund balance, which is basically the total fund balance less any restricted amounts and non-spendable amounts. And then the orange bar is your unassigned fund balance. So it's important to note that the entire fund date fund balance of 790000 is restricted, so it would show in the green bar and not the orange bar. The board also appropriated 508000 of fund two fund balance for the 2018-19 fiscal year which once again means it would be included in the green bar, but not the orange bar because it was appropriated. Um, there is an unassigned fund balance of $866,000 at, at June 30th, 2018. And the slight decrease you see from the current year to the prior year was primarily related to the $225,000 decrease in fund two. It is important to note that the board appropriated $350,000 uh, for 630 2018 so you plan to spend money.
Alrighty, the next slide is the general and restricted revenue fund balance as a percentage of governmental expenditures. So this is comparing your fund balance to total expenditures that are spent at the board. It does exclude capital outlay expenditures and individual school expenditures. So if you convert these percentages to days, your available appropriation represents around 12.41 days of operating expenditures, which is the green bar. Your purple bar it equates to around five days of operating expenditures. So this means that if funding were to cease or freeze across all levels, you'd have around 12 days um, of operations before you'd be looking for different funding. Um, from our from our level, a lot of a lot of the funding and fund balance levels, it, it depends on the relationship with the county and whether they are providing enough allocation to let you hold a fund balance. And once again, that's tough because the state or DPI doesn't prescribe a minimum fund balance for a school district like they do a county or a municipality. So this last slide is a snapshot of the child nutrition fund. You'll note that cash increased $164,000 when compared to the prior year. Um, your operating de revenues did decrease, decrease around $200,000, but this was due to the participation in the community el eligibility program this year. And that program provides free meals to all students living in high poverty areas. So that revenue would move down to federal reimbursements as opposed to operational revenues. Your personnel expense in the Child Nutrition Fund did increase around $41,000 in the current year. And the net deficit shown in the current year is strictly related to that GASB 75 implementation, which was the OPEB liabilities being brought on the books. So now we'll go over quickly the compliance audit. So as part of government auditing standards, we're required to evaluate the board's compliance with laws and regulations, contracts and agreements such as grant agreements. Included in the financial statements is what is known as our yellow book reports, which summarizes the results of this. We did have one finding which was considered a significant deficiency related to the yellow book report. It was for expenditures and access of budget uh, for the general fund. This is a this is a finding that is we have to report based on procedures prescribed by DPI. If you think about it from an audit risk standpoint, it doesn't increase our audit risk. I think it's also important to note that we have to report a finding if actual appropriations are over the intended budget, but we do not have to report a finding if the finance officer just budgeted extremely conservatively and so the budget wasn't accurate but it was conservative, it wouldn't be a finding. So you guys can decide what's, what's more worse. We're also required to evaluate the board's compliance with federal programs that we deem to be major in the current year. We noted the Title I program and the special education, special education cluster, which were considered major and required to be audited. We didn't have any findings related to the major federal programs. And then lastly, we're also required to evaluate the board's compliance with state programs that are deemed to be major. We noted two programs which were considered major and was required to be audited, and that was the state public school program as well as career and technical education. And once again, we didn't have any findings to report. So that's all I have, but I will open it up for questions or comments. Anyone with any questions? And something I meant to do at the beginning of the meeting, um, we have already introduced him before in a meeting that we had, but uh, this is a, a, a larger meeting for the public, so our new superintendent, Mr. Matthew Cheeseman, uh, is here with us tonight, and so uh, he has hit the ground running the last two weeks, so I know he's been overwhelmed with information, but uh, I hope the public will embrace him as our new leader in Beaufort County Schools, and uh, we're going to charge up the hill with you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Sincerely. Thank you. Do you have any questions or concerns? No, we've actually already reviewed right, this I figured together. you probably um, have been with him. Very confident. Okay. 
All right. If there are no uh, questions or concerns or comments, uh, we'll move forward. Can I entertain uh, a motion to accept the audit as given? Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Any discussion? <clears throat> All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are going to keep moving along, and Mr. Stan Hudson, I have you up next for the bid on the uh, the HVAC Child Nutrition and Plant Operations Office. If you don't mind, are you going to? We're going to interrupt real quick. Um, so today, board, we actually received a little bit of breaking news, and Mr. Oliver oh, from okay. your uh, previous question from the December meeting regarding potential relocation versus rebuild. Um, Willie Mack actually found some information, I'd say, midday today. And so we don't normally like to spring it on you at the last moment, but I think this is information that all of you should hear prior to hearing from Stan because okay. it really may guide you in a direction before we ever get to Stan. So, okay. Willie Mack, you want to talk a little bit about it? Okay. Um, at our last meeting, uh, as the superintendent mentioned, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oliver asked about the uh, possibility of relocating so I went back and contacted our FEMA representative and then speaking with her she said that the mitigation programs are usually run by the state of North Carolina and not through FEMA and that they usually or traditionally fail within residential structures and usually within they were usually structures that could not be repaired but would need to be replaced so she um, instructed me to contact the state of North Carolina uh, so today I spoke with Mr. Ryan Cox, who is the uh, Hazard Mitigation Grant Specialist with the State of North Carolina's Emergency Management Program. And he said that the program does have a potential and possibility, uh, but the probability for this type of a structure to be included in a buyout or mitigated program was low. However, um, when they look at mitigation, usually the, the the emphasis is stressed on the greater need, which is usually falls within the residential community. Um, there was some debate over, at this point, which program do I go with, the state or FEMA? And he asked that I give him 24 hours to get back with me on a direction of which way to go. And then it would be up to the board on how you all would like to proceed. So this is important for you to know right now because um, as a district, you have invested $133,000 into that building in terms of removing some of the debris and, and really gutting it down to the studs. And we have actually received um, the insurance check that has come in that we believe could cover the rebuild um, of that facility. And that insurance check was for roughly $256,000. So you have enough funds to actually cover it. You'd have a little bit of extra funds in that regard to do some of the fixtures on the inside. Um, but in short, I, I think you need to think through as a board whether you'd like to decide to hear some more of the information on another day in terms of possible relocation. And otherwise, if you prefer just to rebuild, um, then we can move closer on to what Stan has for us. Now, also be mindful that if you choose to relocate, you also have other buildings right there, too. And so would this relocation be the beginning of a greater plan for multiple relocation? But I, I just thought it was best that you have all knowledge since you brought it up specifically at the last meeting. Um, so, Madam Chair, I ask that, you know, if you'd like to have a little bit of dialogue in terms of what people think, then we can move forward. I would. I, I would. I'm uh, not... Uh, Notwithstanding, you know, Butch's thoughts, uh, which I agreed with, uh, personally experienced the the repetitive loss issues that came with one of our family homes. And after a while, FEMA's only going to continue to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild and repair and repair until they're going to say something has to be done. We're not going to keep. Uh, and, but that's that's with private homes, residential. Um, but I would think that repetitive loss, and in that location, Stan, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a potential for repetitive loss. It's been really right. So, uh, so I think it does bear thinking about. Now, my question would be, 
with what we have spent and have we pers personally, have we actually spent that out of our fund balance? We actually deposited the proceeds. We had actually paid the invoice for the uh, the protective measures to get the molded materials right. out of the building. Keeping in mind, we had people still working in that building, and we needed to get that material out for their safety as well as liability for us. So we did front that cost. However, the checks from the insurance company and conversations with the insurance company that they would cover those costs. Right. So we had and obviously they did with yes. the check you received. However, if you if we were to choose to go in a different direction for relocation, would they want that full amount back, which would leave us having paid the hundred and thirty five thousand mm -hmm. out of our balance? That's a question I'm not sure I would think that that's our insurance proceeds and we can proceed to use them as we or the board sees fit, but I can double check. Is that above your pay scale, Mac, to know the answer to that as far as insurance companies go? <laughs> <laughs> you deal with a different set of dogs on this I know. Day. But very often they do ask for it back, don't they? They do. They yeah. do. You better be careful. Right. <laughs> I think you got a high probability if you move away from this building. You're going to eat the cost that you spend. That, that. You that's, count on that. that's what I'm thinking, that too. That's very yeah, that's exactly right. Well, Matt, remind, aren't we spending an astronomical amount of money on flood insurance? Like 20? I believe that building is about 24000 I think it did go up. Is it worth like 25000 a year? That yes, we're spending sir. On, insurance, on flood insurance? Yes, sir. I and how many that. square feet are we insuring with that? Hmm. That is the only structure, I believe, that's under that policy. The Child Nutrition Building that did have some water within the ductwork is not covered under the policy. About 10,000 10, square feet. That's occupied space. That's, that's occupied. not counting the shop. That's office space. But, are, but there are items in the shop that are certainly, are they, uh, are the contents, the shop, was the flood insurance on any contents yes, as well? We lost this. We lost that type of, those type of items, which is also included in, in that, I think, too. Actually, that is a separate check yeah, item, that. which was, I believe, $11,000 in that settlement check. Okay. We only had two tools in the shop. The, the, two, okay. the 256 figure was for the building. The contents was $11,708.58. Okay. What is the pleasure I, of the board? I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking... I mean, over a 10 year period, you're going to spend a quarter of a million dollars just on insurance. Mm -hmm. If we could get it out of the floodplain, I mean, that, a quarter of a million dollars will build you a fairly decent new building or at least get you started. And I, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of wish we hadn't spent the money that we spent so far um, and put us in this position, but I understand it had to be done. And uh, there was no place to put those people at the um, time. What do you but, think? Um, well, next question is where would we put it? Yeah, that's we have the land built, we have the land to yeah. put it on, so that's all the land acquisition and some other things. So. You'll have a fair amount of invested if you would. Why do you just got to look at the Eastern Elementary building, the cap of $980,000 and not a thing inside of it. Right at a million dollars for that facility. So. <laughs> And there's two offices in that So with that update today, what are we discussing? Do we have an action item now? Or are we, are we? So you actually do have an opportunity. So if you decide to rebuild, we have actually received bids, and Stan is going to do a presentation on that to talk okay. through those bids. So uh, they closed on January 2nd, and we've opened those. So we're ready to move on to that. But really, Mac and I just really wanted to make sure we understood the pleasure of the board yeah. before ever diving into that. Uh, to make sure that you would prefer to rebuild versus relocate. When were you told to wait 24 hours? Today, right around this afternoon. I said we waited this long, wait 24 right, hours. Right, and we have another meeting this month. I don't, I don't, yeah. is that going to push us that far behind, Stan? Is everybody? Push us out. We're working, we're making do. I was going to say, you're we're occupying the building. Yeah. We're making do with it this month. Right. Uh, I think we'd be remiss not to take the opportunity they've given us to, to see if there's merit to it. And, uh, Contractor bid is good for 30 days? Should be, should be yeah. at least. Should, I, I would think, think so. Should, should we ask him to see if we got to get the money? Yeah, yeah, I think well, I need more information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. I think we have to know. Is there a way to find out if we choose to, to go after a, another building? How do we find out if we have to refund what we spent? I'll, I'll contact the agent, Mr. Hood. 
that handled the flood claim for and there are also there are also instances where if you've come this far and you're inhabiting the the building and you do build something in many instances you have to tear down what you've done so you can't ever occupy it again and they don't let you build something new and keep the old too that's that's not at least that's how it is with a lot of residential things you have yeah, to that's what yeah. My experience with mitigation is that it becomes green space. So that's no permanent green structures. Space. Okay. I would love to entertain a motion that we table this until we have more information. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? We've got a motion to table this until we have more information by our next meeting. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Terry. Mr. Hudson, thank you for coming yes, out. Tonight. I appreciate it. So uh, we're not even going to look at those bids or anything until next time. Okay. Thank you, Stan. He's on the agenda. Can I still ask him a question? Yes. Sure. Where are we at on the CPS board job? Um, so last well, time they were going to be before Christmas. They were four weeks out, so we should be close to doing. Yeah, we're getting time. close to the install. The actual manufacturer did not have any of the floor they chose, and didn't have enough of the flooring to do a complete dialogue to make so we didn't have any mismatch. But it was supposed to be shipped the 21st of January, and then Sammy's ready to start putting it in. And Ms. Fosberg's agreed to let him do um, one room at a time, and she'll move them around so we can get it done during the regular business hours. She said she would do whatever she needed. Yeah, she's, I, I spoke with her yesterday, and she said she was willing to okay. still offer the same thing. She had available room. It would just take us a little time in between each time to get the teacher move. And they ought to be able to, as far as die lots go, unless you were doing one big gymnasium, die lots can change as long as you know from, if you need 25 boxes to do one classroom, you just need die lots in, 20, in increments of 25. It's okay if the die lot in the classroom three doors down doesn't match because you're never going to see them at the same time. So there's ways it's around supposed to be shipped the 21st, okay. so it's getting replaced. Next week. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Any yeah. other questions for Stan before we let him go home with his nurse? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. Please. Oh, yeah. I can help out, right? All right. Moving on along, our next action item is going to be about field trips, and we turn this over to our new superintendent, Mr. Cheeseman. Uh, thank you. So before you, you have uh, three field trips for your consideration. Uh, two from Southside High School and one from Snowden Elementary School. Uh, so item number one, you're looking at the Blue Heron Ocean Bowl Tournament, which is an academic competition for students, uh, specifically around marine education. Hmm. Uh, and you can see there the total number of students, total number of chaperones, and the mode of transportation. If you look at number two, Southside High School uh, for performing in Colonial Williamsburg, uh, total number of students, mode of transportation, total number of chaperones. And then also for number three, this too is an academic competition uh, specifically for Beta Club, total number of students, total number of chaperones, and activity bus. And so therefore I'm asking the board to um, consider my recommendation for approval of the following field trips. Move approved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carry. Thank you, Mr. Cheeseman. And moving right along, we're going stay with you on the school calendar flexibility can everybody pull that link up um, so being that this is a work session I'm very excited to bring things for your thinking for the next few weeks um, as we get back together at the end of the month so this is uh, for lack of better terms huge this is a gr really great opportunity where state legislatures are now finally listening to its constituents in terms of calendar flexibility as you know for many moons that our calendar has been restricted for the end of August to the beginning of June, and you have to figure it out in between, largely under the conception that it's been for the tourism industry. Well, there's been a greater movement, and some of your legislators are now putting together a bill that would consider flexibility of moving school no sooner than August 10th to really look at that window of time to, you know, for the most part, get aligned to community college schedules allow students to finish their coursework before um, the December holiday and to restart in an appropriate fashion. Uh, so in short, the 2019-2020 legislative agenda includes the calendar flexibility opportunity to look at better school planning, calendar planning in case of inclement weather, but also for student achievement. So I bring this to you because in two weeks I'm going to ask you to consider a resolution. 
if you approve that and adopt that resolution, that resolution will go back to the North Carolina School Boards Association and in culmination with all the other districts or those that choose to be a part of it would then be presented to our legislators. So what I'm asking you as a board is to then go back to your constituents over the next two weeks to really talk with them specifically or be a great ear around what would they like the calendar to be? When do you want to start? What does that look like for work days for teachers? What does that look like for testing days for students? And in short, <clears throat> You know, what's the best fit for Beaufort County Schools? And I think right now your online calendar looks fantastic, but in short, you're really trying to adopt something similar. That would be the ease of the professional and the ease for the student. Because right now you actually have students who go home during Christmas break and come back and two days later are engaging in elementary testing. And then of course you're about to, you're right in the middle of testing now. And so I think Ms. Lilly and I agree wholeheartedly that a resolution considered by you in two weeks uh, would be my suggested way of moving forward to let the state know that Beaufort County Schools is involved. And for your knowledge, uh, Columbus County, Yancey County has already done this, um, Watauga County, so many other counties are joining into this. Um, so again, the purpose of me bringing this to you in a work session is so you have at least 10 business days to really reach out to your constituents. Any questions? Yeah, that's crazy. that's yeah. not a the, success. The things we're thinking about is really to kind of follow the college schedule, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's really so that makes sense. It makes sense, <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. And, that's really and I've it. I've spoken to teachers at every grade level, and 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 like Mr. Sheesman said, Andrea, I know you have too, and. From, from kindergarten to 12th grade, I don't know of any teacher, I'm sure there will be one now that'll call me tonight, but um, they have all talked about the testing that goes on immediately when they get back and, um, and how they wish it could end by Christmas. So um, are you getting, if you have anybody objecting, is it a certain grade level or you're, you're not, I haven't either. And I've talked to several different ones at different and they also, can you please get that going? It was a very big topic at the uh, school board workshop. Absolutely. Was yep. Absolutely. A lot of people wanted it. I was going to say, did you get the feeling that everybody yep. was going to jump on board? Yep. I said when uh, Carter County people, they were forward to. Yeah. Which county? Carter. Really? That's been a hangout. Yeah. There can be. There can be. The beach counties, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Well, I think now more that you, a lot of them used to rely on teenage help, and I think now, unfortunately, they rely on teachers. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that's teachers true. as their second job. Yeah, that's true. And they All use right. a lot of foreign exchange students. Too. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, uh, not many. and the communities have grown. They have a lot of adults yeah. who now work those jobs. That's right. All right, we're on, on down to the. Oh, sorry, well, Mr. Chapman, would you be willing to contact some of the other area superintendents in our in our region and see if they're also going to be or see if they will pursue a absolutely uh, tomorrow as well. tomorrow i'll be attending the northeast resa meeting mm -hmm. with all superintendents uh, in williamston that we Good do time. on tomorrow i'll make sure i come back with that information and i'll Send it out to you via email so you have knowledge as you're working over the next 10 days on it. That'd be good. Fantastic. I did mention this to one of our county commissioners just in passing. You know, if this came before them, uh, would he consider uh, something that this would be something that they would also entertain supporting us in? And of course, his answer was absolutely because mm -hmm. he understood the importance of the number of high school students we have that are in the community college schedule <clears throat> and it just makes the most sense so. and i think you're really going to see especially northeast north carolina take off with it uh Chowan county commissioners have already approved a resolution camden county schools and camden county commissioners have already done it so i really think you're going to start to see it spread especially east of i-95 mm -hmm. that's good uh -huh. they are asking they did make the comment they didn't want to take it to the county commissioners also mm -hmm. And, and I think that's a good thing for us to do also, but I'll get that information for you and send it out tomorrow. All right. All right. Um, so we've, we've done that. Now we're on the budget development timeline. Sure. And so I just passed out a single sheet of paper to you, and my apologies for uh, last moment. Um, but I also wanted to say this is a little bit of breaking news, too. So I met with Brian Elligood today, um, as I've had about... 35 meetings in seven days. All right. So, But really to get a thirst of... Uh, 
you know, to quench that thirst of an understanding. So Mr. Allegra did let me know that Mark Doan and I are scheduled for a, a January 30th presentation for the commissioner's retreat. And so therefore, I wanted to put something down in writing for you so you can visually see it, just in terms of what does a, a budget calendar timeline look like. I'm not sure that you've had this in the past, but just want to make sure we're on the same page. Um, and so we'll fill some of these dates in. So this is just my way of saying, I, you know, the finance director and I in January right now are going to start the budget planning process. Um, and then through February, all budget managers, meaning directors, assistant superintendent, myself, anyone tied to funding is really going to sit down with Willie Mack to talk about what that looks like. And so you can see through March, uh, we're going to make sure that we tie those budgets together. And by the end of March, and I put to be announced just based off of our board meeting, we're going to look at when we all put the final changes together. So in March at the last meeting, you'll have an opportunity to look at your initial budget line. And then you get to sit on it for about 30 days, meaning you get to talk with constituents, you get to talk amongst yourselves, you get you know at least four business weeks to really absorb through it. And then in uh, April and May, we finalize it all. And I know that the typical deadline to the county commissioners is May 15th. We try to do it earlier. Uh, I know sometimes by the end of that budget line, they, they typically have an understanding of what they're going to fund with you, fund for you. But it, this was just my attempt to show you what timeline that Willie Mack and I are going to be on so you know what stage we're in. And of course, we can adapt it to what your needs are. And uh, Willie Mack, I'll share it with you at the end of this meeting. <laughs> okay. So, but leading through that, if you don't mind me to step forward, Go right ahead. your district visits um, across all of our school sites. So, I would like. I'm suggesting to you that you look at the calendar week of the January 21st through the 25th, <laughs> knowing that that Monday is a holiday. Um, so I'm inviting you to attend any one of three days, not all three if you'd like, but any one of three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, so the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And Ms. Duke and I will schedule it through her office to send out to you calendar invites to tour the schools. And so to really get a good understanding of what our needs are, to hear from our principals and constituents directly so we can all be together. Um, and I have already met with three county commissioners and the county manager, uh, including the um, commissioner chair, and, and some of them would like to actually join us at times. But our goal really is to get a vision of what you believe needs to be you know, repaired or have attention to. And so Willie Mack and I and others can put those line items into a budget. And why that's important for me during that week is the following week is the commissioner retreat on January 30th. They would like to see um, pictorial documentation of what our, some of our needs would be. And so again, Ms. Duke and I will schedule those days. You can hop in. I'm really thinking the north side of the county on Tuesday, you know, some of our city on Wednesday and the south side on Thursday. But I can be uh, flexible to even walk with you through our schools on the weekends, whatever is most appropriate to you. All right. In years past, we have had a few. I know Ed's been almost every time, and uh, other commissioners have joined us on these tours, uh, which has Gary, been really nice. Gary Brown. Gary Brown. If he's, if he's having still. Okay. Yes, and, and also in the final board meeting of the month, before I actually make that presentation with Mr. Doan, I'd like to share it with you at the next board meeting so you truly understand what's being presented and you can tell me what you agree to or disagree to so I can take it out or add it. All right. Can you put that timeline together, please? So are you and Mr. Chief? Yeah. Start early enough in the day that this not come out. And, sure. Um, sure. It's late in the day, it's busy. Before. I know it does yeah. the yeah. yeah. I don't know about everybody else, but later in the day, it's busy. Yeah, Absolutely. and as soon as you decide the schedule, uh, get that out because that'll help us decide who can go where. Absolutely. So we'll work on it tomorrow and get it out tomorrow. So. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Uh, you can Time keep forward. right on going. Fantastic. This will be my last part for now. <laughs> Um, school finance dashboard, and I've had a, a really great opportunity to speak with probably five of you out of the nine from other work that we've been doing. Uh, but part of what I would like to do as superintendent is to really bring information to you that I think you could chew on, really put your hands around, so it would help educate you in a, in a manner that gives you knowledge for other decisions. And so after speaking with Willie Mack, what I recognized is on a monthly basis, you don't necessarily have 
the school district's finances in front of you. So it's very challenging to make educated decisions um, and also just understand how to allocate different work items and funding if you don't have it in front of you. So in short, uh, Willie Mack and I are going to work on a dashboard and I'm going to ask him uh, starting likely February to present that dashboard to you each month you know at the last meeting of the month or even at the work session if he really feels as though it's the best fit but to look at total number of money that we have in district in terms of state federal and local dollars and to give you a snapshot from august to june in terms of percentage in each allocation of what's been spent i think to really look at a dashboard and understand uh, very similar to what you would see in an energy <clears throat> bill you know what's your consumption versus what your limitations are versus what you have uh, so considering we're putting together a, a finance dashboard and I invite you to reach out to me either after this meeting or through email or by phone just to talk to me about what specifically you would like to see in a fis fiscal dashboard presentation to you. Uh, for example, and what my thoughts were, as we receive state money we can show that to you in green so you know what's coming in. As If we have to make manipulation of the budget you see that in yellow so you know what's being moved around. And then, of course, as we lose money from simple emails that we get sometimes from the state, that we would show that to you in red. So you truly have an understanding of what's coming in, what's going out. Um, and I just think it's really important for you to understand the finances of it because you're running a $70 million operation that we call school. And so knowing that what happens inside the classroom is education and you're in charge of that business outside of that classroom. So I wanted to give you some insight in terms of why it's coming to you, especially if we're going to talk with your county commissioners about local funding. I think you under need to understand what your dashboard looks like in a monthly basis. So you can talk with your constituents and be armed with questions. All right. Absolutely. All right. So, and that's part of what I'd like to do in each work session is to bring new things to you for your learning. So it just builds upon the knowledge that you already have now. All right, and Madam Chair, thank you very much. I don't think any of us will object to that. And Willie Mack, thank you. I know that's more on you, but I think once you get going with it, then it'll just be plugging in the figures. Willie Mack and I are going to be like this, not <laughs> like this. <laughs> very I'm excited. Looking forward to it, Willie. He, he is I'm my sweet. new partner. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Cheeseman, you know who else is very happy about that? It's Mr. Doan. He's no doubt. He's sure his new partner. No doubt. The man in so, the white shirt. No doubt. So, uh, Aren't you so if we can drive a car, we'll be able to read it. Red, <laughs> red green, and yellow. Fantastic. All right. You know, um, we joke about, I mean, like we're doing right now, yeah. and, uh, because I know it's extra work. But it is nice to know rather than some yes. things in the past. So, at the end of the year, we sat down to try to put a budget together, and we were here invariably where we spend X number of dollars of our fund balance when we really plan to spend this much. Sure. It'd be nice to hear that as we go through the We'd year. We'd run his legs off. And we'll ask him a question, he has to run and oh. bring it back because he's right. we didn't tell him. Which we isn't were fair to him sure. as we start asking questions, sure. whereas this <coughs> will eliminate so the surprise question for where we're at. Well, and, and I, I to address that, sir, what I will say to all of you is you do not want to do an autopsy. No. Meaning at the end. You want to be able to manipulate it in the middle and, and during the course of it. But also, Willie Mack and I will be meeting with principals on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So he and I will be going to school sites. Here is designated. We'll be going to school sites with me to meet with principals, to show them their finances, to give them greater knowledge of school finance, where they are in their budget, percentages. And, and a lot of times across the country, you see schools that suddenly start spending in March, April, May, because they have to downsize their, their funding. By doing it this way, you can start in the spring planning for what your expenditures are going to be in the summer and the fall, so kids really have a great opportunity to work with it. So, thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, we are now going to hear from Mr. Matt Hodges. Uh, Mac, were you able to prepare a little something to give us? Uh, this is just on the nurse bus school. Uh, uh, board. I really got surprised by your phone call <laughs> that you all, because I'm going to tell you where I'm coming from. Since we have been in this situation with the school, I have deliberately tried to stay away from any type of conversation with you guys because I wanted you to know right. <laughs> what's not but I don't want you all to think that I'm trying to sway you guys and ladies anyway because I want you all to make a, 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 a non-biased decision. Yeah. But no, I, I what's have... What's going on with the school as far as well, uh, successes and 
successes. Uh, they've got roughly right now over at the school. We've got a board meeting tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we are um, in the process of doing a strategic plan. I think this is of uh, the years of existence. The plan is now, this is the third plan. So, third plan, third presenter. So, anyway, um, anyway, we, we do have an audit scheduled, audit presentation tomorrow. Um, Ms. Deborah Baggett, who is the finance officer in Pitt County, also does our finances. And Willie Mac, she does do a booklet each month showing the money who's paid in their student dues and who hasn't paid in and anyway she does a pie chart and and so forth and and, and all kind of gives us a clear picture of what's going on but um we will have the audit presentation tomorrow we've got two new board members that have just come on from the business and industry section um miss marlo lily and mr coltrane with the telecom uh yeah mm -hmm. Uh, I have yet to see either one of those because I've been out for one meeting. Um, but anyway, that is what's going on. And we're going to also tomorrow be um, discussing the operating budget as well. And that's always fun. Um, I'm stepping out of all them, the board meetings over there as well when it comes to closed session. And they, they, they kind of start them at 4 o'clock, closed session immediately. So I'm out. 45 minutes or more at times with their with the attorney there being present uh, but their board meetings are a little bit different from what you would think your standard board meeting that you're accustomed to but um anyway they they follow a certain protocol and i've got samples of previous agendas here that any of you all would like to look at um but they go through i serve uh, at the present time i serve on their uh, strategic plan for buildings and future growth of the school uh, I will I feel kind of I don't know what I can say to a certain point yeah. oh, you know uh, this was a request by a couple of board well, members sure, just sure I appreciate it and all but um, mm -hmm. back when dr. Phipps was here and we were in uh, sitting there as board members and then also when we wind up going into a um, legal matter we we just looked at each other and we just decided maybe we just need to shut her down our reports and everything until right. think the 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 the, the, cloud, the skies and the clouds clear and so forth but no um they have a very good board of business and industry and educational people we also have partners with um mount olive college and also the president of the martin community college now sits on that board as well um, they're still looking a superintendent's um, position to sit on that board as well uh, since Dr. Phipps left. Uh, that's a vacant position. I'm not, I know I'm not going there. But anyway, there is a position. Dr. Linker with Pitt County Schools sits on that board because they are the finance officer uh, piece for the school system as well over there. But um, anyway. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions I possibly can, but like I say, since all this dark cloud between this board and that board, I've been a little bit hesitant about giving any type I, of report. I certainly so. understand. Does anybody have a specific question? Do you, Terry? I just want to make a comment. I was one of those board members that wanted this, and I've kind of missed this over the last two years. Right. Well, I'm sorry I came to, to it late. Um, um, you know, with the with the what we've been going through right. with Nurse lately, mm -hmm. but I would recommend to this board that we start having a monthly update, Nurse Ba update. Who I mean, yourself, you know, provide the minutes. What did you discuss? What did they talk about, etc., so that we can stay informed of what is happening. You tell me what Nurse you want, and I'll get it for you. I'll be happy to do it. As long as they'll provide it, <laughs> I'll be. I'll do. I'm sure their minutes are public, aren't they? Yeah, they've, they've got to post their minutes and whatnot. Right. 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 How quickly they get them? There. Um, they some. They might be a little. Well, well as, I mean, I don't know how often they have meetings. How Once often do they have meetings, Matt? Once a month. All right. So right. right. I mean, Unless you're on a committee, regurgitate then. those minutes. 
monthly to the board. I think that all of us have a right to know what's going on in Nurseville. We don't sit there to listen to them. I'll bet you, Terry, that this board here, what you just said and what you're requesting, is the only board that's doing it of the five schools. That's okay. Okay. But I, I listen, and I don't mind, but... I don't care what the other four counties are and doing. And I'm not... They might go to open eyes, we are, Right. Uh, we, are, we are currently the primary stakeholders. <laughs> right. We yes, are. You, yes, you are. Yes, right. you are. So, I mean, uh, the way and I look that, at it is, over the last week, I have a very vested interest in Nurseville while sitting on this board. Mm -hmm. So whoever you right now is representing our board over there, I want to be informed. Okay. And at any time, any of the rest of you would like to have an opportunity to sit on that board, uh, just... Well, that may that may happen. Um, you know? And, and uh, along with the minutes, any special events that are coming up, it would be nice to know. Absolutely. Both, so many Beaufort okay. County School students from Beaufort County are in those events. It would be nice to know they have a special event. Now I know what you need, and I'll be happy to provide it as long as I'm back. And you have not been remiss in us. We have an extra. So, and I, right. And Don would tell us about things going on from time to time. But, but any other questions for Can Mac just, about what yeah, you might Not want? a question because I'm sure it doesn't have answers, sure. but something you might can check in. Sure. Because I have a number of people in my area that go, this is, has nothing to do with the, the legal situation that's going on. I, I'm and being trying to be very careful not to yes, say that. Conversations. <laughs> I just have people, you know, I have people in my community that attend school there. And we all know that they moved from mm -hmm. one location to where they're currently at. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember how that happened. Well, I'm hearing from some people now that they're currently looking at another building to move again. And you, <coughs> you may not have heard that. Do you mind just checking in well, that? Because if they're getting ready to move somewhere else since we are involved, I'd like to know about it. No, Absolutely. I, I can tell you what I do know, and that is okay. this. They have contracted with Jimmy Height. To do a study on the present facility. Okay. At the same time, we were approached, the Nurseville Board was approached about uh, a new building that would cost them absolutely nothing on the Martin Community College campus. For whatever reason, that proposal never came back before the board. And that proposal has now been taken off the table gotcha. I mean, and I will, I, Don and I were probably the only ones on that board that were supporting that proposal because we, we were called out in a board meeting why not we were probably the only two that was about Christmas was a year ago that that proposal was made and it set with no and yours truly I uh, brought it up at a finance committee meeting. I'm on the finance committee over there. And I asked them where were we at with that proposal. And then we found out that <laughs> it was pulled because no no attention was given to it. So. Okay. And that may be what they're talking about. But I mean, I just did not. Just, <clears throat> I, I, I just like to know if I wake up one morning and we're no longer in James. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> You will, know, you will know, if I, you will know if I, you know, you will know, I'll let you know from here on out, as long as I'm there. Well, we didn't say for James, we just said to another location, because that building's in such bad shape that they're currently in. Well, I've heard that for the last year from folks that I know that are going there, that they're, they're, they've been looking for another establishment. Some of the town leaders do not want them to leave, James. Right. They don't. So. But, I mean, I just thought it was strange that you have five different partners and one of your biggest partners hasn't been contacted about you might want to move somewhere else. Right. Yeah. So well, Mike, I, 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 do have, I do have a couple of questions, but I don't know if you are at liberty to answer the questions or not. So I'm pretty sure I'm not. But, <laughs> but you, can, you can ask and I can... You can say no, can't you? I can say no. Okay, all right. Let me ask you this. Okay. Are the students at Nursburg being educated at Nursburg? After the first two years, no. They go to Martin Community or they take classes online. The first two years, they are being uh, educated by Nursburg? That's 
that's the way I take it, they're being educated there. The reason being, your first two years, they're taking your basic courses that are offered Exactly. There. Once mm -hmm. they go beyond that, they start getting into what would be elective, and then they off campus. Mm -hmm. That's why that is. That's right. So I went early college, can you just name? Very good observation. Okay, what's your second question? That one got answered. That was good. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> so, she's, she's being very careful. I, I, I see that here. wheel turning. Tread <laughs> lightly on that second question. Yes, sir. Can I add something to what I said earlier? Sure. Yeah. With with her question, the reason why Don and I both were very supportive of that proposal for the new building is that would cut down a lot of time traveling back and forth nine miles plus from Martin Community to Janesville when you could actually be in a classroom working and being on site. Mac, did they ever offer up a reason why no one else was on board with that? I mean, when you look at it logically, it makes sense. So there had to be some reasons where they shared with you? I think it was county political pressure from other parties. You within heard, Martin County. You heard it said that James right. being supported. The leadership <laughs> wanted them to stay right. there. And, they're, and, yes. and, and they, they've got some county commissioners that are very supportive that want to keep that school in Jamesville too. There's nothing down on that end of the county. I will agree there. You have several county commissioners from Martin County that wants to keep it there. I know that. And I like that. But I, don't, I can't agree with that part. Um, okay, what's your second question, Ms. Boo? My second question is, oh, okay. mm. <laughs> um, I'm not going to ask it. I'm not going to ask it. Okay. okay. Is it something that probably needs to be a closed session yes, question? Yes, I yes, understand. Yes, yes. Are, are there any other statements or comments or questions for Not at this Mac? Time. Thank, Thank you, Mac. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Mac. That's open ended, though, Mac. Uh, I know. <laughs> Always another day. That's right. I tell you, Mac is sweating over here. I know. I have so, Mac, Mac. I, 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 and I was not intentionally, I'm sorry I came to you late on it, personally. Because I only notified Lisa, I think, a couple of days ago that I wanted to do this. I had to mull it over in my mind since last week. But I, I really want this to be a, a monthly thing, at least. If they have a meeting, I want us to discuss it in our next meeting. I'll tell you how dedicated I was. When she called me, I was in New Orleans on Canal Street. <laughs> And we did, we, I just seen and President started making Trump, notes. And I got I got up this morning at two thirty. I took a taxi to the airport to get here for this not tonight's meeting. Oh, you just get. I was already coming back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds good on camera anyway. No, no. I could hear the clanging behind him. So right. I knew he was there. That was that cable call. <laughs> yeah. But he did not rush through, and he was more than happy to, to oblige. And thank you so much, man. And I will I will do uh, once you all now. I, I know what you want. Okay. I'll give it to you. All thank right. you. Have you got our um, passed oh, pass down? Okay. Are you looking at a motion? I am looking for a motion now to go into closed session. Up. Vice Chair stepped up, so. Okay. I move that we go into closed session pursuant to Joint Statutes 443-318.11A1 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files under Joint Statutes 415C-321 and to discuss a potential actual claim administrative procedure or judicial action. The title of the action is 18 CBS 157 Nurse versus Beaufort County Schools. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carried. And Mac, we're going to, if it's all right, we're going to do the personnel and stuff first. Okay. So you can stay right where you are. Um, uh, now I need to entertain a motion that we approve the personnel agenda as presented. So moved. So all right. <laughs> <laughs> you three got this covered already. Yeah, bro, we did. All, right. all, all those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? 
Okay, motion carried. Now, before Madam we Chair, have, yes, I have something before we close. Absolutely, I was just going to say to remind everybody our next meeting would be on uh, the 29th at 5:30. But uh, Lisa will also send something out to you fairly soon. Uh, about the tours and I hope some of you can go um, and what we've done in the past uh, TW everybody else has done uh, is we meet here or at the school say if there's just one school you want to go to but if you want to go to all of them then we meet here and just go from there we sometimes carpool or whatever right. we'll get that from uh, from Lisa all right yes sir um, as board members know we voted to allow Northside to make a special dedication to coach Mike Proctor um, that is going to be presented or recognized on February 1st at the it's a Friday night at the home basketball game uh, I'd like to invite all the board members to come if, if you'd like to and also invite the public to be there uh, it will be a special dedication to coach uh, in memory of coach Mike Proctor um, at the home basketball game on February 1st great and Lisa do you mind sending us a reminder on that it, I think it's yeah, going to be. At, I don't think. I don't know if it's. At, it's going to be around the boys' games. So probably around seven, uh, seven ish. How many? Uh, they, how many do they have? Uh, girls, JV, and no, it's just it's just JV boys and uh, JV then girls, and then they have boys. three teams. So okay, three teams. And you think it'll be somewhere? <coughs> game will start somewhere around seven, and I don't know if he's going to do it at halftime or before the game. I, Is there a way that either I, you or Lisa could kind of find and, out? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll get more information to get Because I know that first game usually starts prior to most of us getting off work, doesn't yeah. it? Does it start faster? Mm -hmm. I'm used to it at Washington. They seem like they start 30 minutes after school is out. All right. Uh, is there any other board member <coughs> updates? All right. Mr. Cheeseman, do you have an update for us before we adjourn? Uh, just real fast again, I want to say thank you for the opportunity. Um, and I've met with your directors, I've met with all of your principals and core setting and individually uh, spent seven hours with Nurseville last week. I've been to eight of your eight of our schools out of the 14. I've made uh, classroom site visits, I've made school site visits uh, to look at capital needs and instructional needs. I've met with three county commissioners including the county chair, I've met with the county manager uh, and I'm looking forward to coming back to work tomorrow. So thank you very much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I don't know how he squeezes so much into that short period of time, but we are ever so thankful. Now I entertain a motion to adjourn. The motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Everybody have a great week. Thank you so much.